Why am I Big Brute? Why is there a Yank of Rope right there on the side? I'm stuck. Gorgeous day. It's actually it was supposed to be blowing today, but turns out it's not going to blow till tonight. I was going to go to a kite festival, but there's no wind to fly kites, and spraying doesn't like wind. Why well, better just go spray? So let's load her up and let's go. One really, really big pet peeve I have about this machine. Where's the flag holder at? I mean, I had to duct tape that on. It's not that hard to put a flag holder on every piece of machinery you've got. At least for us, maybe. That's okay. I'll make it work. Someday. Someday there'll be a flag holder on every piece of farm machinery out there. You just wait. It'll happen. I mean, look at that. Isn't that nice? So as I've been able to spend some time in the sprayer, a little over 30 hours now, I've been having some pros and cons. A lot of pros, a lot of things I'm really liking about the sprayer. Color aside, it's a great sprayer. It's a really good sprayer. I can't, it's the best sprayer I've ever driven personally. I'll say that hands down right now. But there are some things that are kind of like, uh, why is that like that? So I'll just go through a couple cons. Not real big, but just there. And then I'm gonna talk about the pros. A lot of pros, a few cons. First con, I don't like that mirror right there. I've hit my head on it about four times. The reason I don't like it there is because I know it's easy to mount off the top of the cab, just like it would normally mount off the cab on other tractors. But there's a nice railing right there. They could have just had a post come up and hold it up there and then there'd be nothing above you. So when you walk by, I know if I got used to it, I would learn to duck, just like I learned to duck under a Apache boom when I'm climbing up that thing, because that thing is definitely a skull crusher. You're not paying attention. But it's just kind of annoying, you know? It's like, I should be able to walk underneath it without this. So that's just one con. Not a big deal. I understand it's easy to have it. So you can adjust the mirror, the automatic adjustment tilts. It's wired to the cab from in there. It's, I get it, but it's just kind of annoying. And I wish I could have been there. Second con is the beeper in this Raven monitor. Your phone has probably what? 50 different chimes you can pick for your ringtone, for your notifications, for all that. If you don't like a certain sound, you can change it. This thing seems to only have one sound and it's like the same sound for just about every notification. Empty tank, boom, or auto guidance shut off, whatever it may be. I think they could have done a better job at having better sounds for this or at least the option to change it. Maybe it's in there, maybe I haven't found it yet. If I haven't found it, it is the option in there to change your notification sounds, then my bad, I just don't know. But for now, yeah, I feel like it could be changed because it's kind of annoying. It's one beep and I would rather have it be multiples because then I would know what that beep is without even looking at the monitor, if that makes sense. One other thing I don't really like is the physical tank gauge. Basically, you can't see anything below 400 gallons. So you got this little bit right here. It's annoying. I like going big brute. It's back further the way the tank's positioned, which gives the ability on the tube. I don't know how they would do that with here. I understand the tank's up close to the cab. It's difficult, but I like being able to physically see what is in that tank. Second thing with that, that tube there is clear and there is no red bobber in it or orange bobber or bright fluorescent yellow bobber. There's nothing in there. So I sometimes cannot physically see where the level at even if it's there. I have to like look super close because it's the same color. They needed some kind of red bobber in there or floater or something to give you an indication. Hey, there's where the level's at. I know the monitor tells you digitally and that does work, but I just personally like I don't know, maybe I like a little bit of old school some stuff, but I like being able to see that. That's one thing that would be nice. Not a big deal, just a little pet peeve. The audio in this cab is not as good as it could be. They've got the speakers buried behind this cab molding up here, and they're just they're not very crisp. I don't know how to explain it. They're just, they don't feel like good speakers. I've been in some vehicles that have had some very fine speakers. You can go buy a set of speakers for a hundred bucks, and they'd probably sound better than what those sound like. So definitely could use better speakers in here. In fact, a lot of times I just wear headphones or earbuds because I get better audio that way than trying to listen to the cab speakers. Another thing that I'm not 100% sold on is the hydrostatic drive. Now, disclaimer, all of our sprayers are mechanically driven with power shift transmissions. I like that because I feel the power go to the wheels. I can regulate the speed based on the engine RPMs. I know that 
as far as this goes, it's nice to have the engine maintain one speed because then your hydraulic pumps are running one speed, which is maintaining the hydraulic flow at one speed, and that works better for a sprayer. But all things aside, the highest jack drive, it whines a little bit. It's kind of a neat sound, but it, it's a little noisy, a little whining. The way the power distributes between the wheels, if you're on flat ground and dry, not a big deal. It works flawlessly. You start pulling some hills, you start going on some uneven ground, they spin kind of funny. One will spin, the other will fit spin. There is a button or a lever on the floor that I can hit with my heel that helps try to lock up the wheels a little better. It'll throw foil to one wheel in the front and one wheel in the back in case you're getting in mud. That's good, but it's just not quite the same as mechanically driving the power to the wheels versus hydraulically. The other concern is the expense of a hydro hydrostatic drive is they're pricey. They're, they're costly to repair, to replace, and if it goes out, it's gonna set you back a while if you don't have warranty on your sprayer. Mechanically, a transmission, a lot cheaper. An axle, a rear end, a lot cheaper. A planetary, a lot cheaper. Though this does have planetaries on it, so I guess that's not really in the picture. So, just a little pet peeve, but honestly, I've heard of guys getting 9,000 hours, 10,000 hours before they gotta replace some systems on a hydrostatic drive on these. I've also heard of guys having it warranty work done because they were under their warranty hours and still had a problem, so just a thought. But don't get me wrong, I understand why they do that. It's for the clearance to get the sprayer up higher, the way the wheels can then move in and out. I mean, I didn't mention that already. Yeah, I should do that right now. The sprayer has the ability under this lever tab right here, a little toggle switch, to actually hydraulically take my wheel spacing and run it out. Oh, I bet it adds two, three feet to my wheels width, maybe even four feet in and out. I don't know what the exact is. So that way if you're row crop spraying, which we're not, we have nine inch spacing and I think the only tire on our farm that's narrower than nine inches is my bicycle. So I just drive over the rows, it doesn't matter. But if you're row crop farming, that's a cool feature. You can fine tune your wheels to fit whatever spacing you have. Right now, I have them spread way out just because it looks cool. Not really enhancing my driving experience that much. And I can see my wheels a little more, it's kind of fun. But it just looks cool. And I like my wide tire tracks when I turn around, it's like, oh, that must have been a huge sprayer driving down that field because those tire tracks are wide. But no, that's really cool. Mechanically driven wheels, you couldn't do that. That's a bonus for the hydrostatic drive is that's what lets you do that. Two, the sprayer's up tall so you can clear crops like tall corn or if you're top dressing or doing a fungicide application or whatever, your sprayer is going to clear the crop, so only your tires are going to drive over it, and that's it. That's one thing nice about having a high stack drive. That's hard to do with the gear boxes because then you got to have drop boxes, you got to have drive lines with universal joints. There's all kinds of different ways to get the power to the wheels. Hydraulic, hydrostatic, all you got to do is have hoses. That's simple. All right, some of the pros to this machine. Well, one, aim command flex is amazing. The ability to have actual nozzles fire on and off as needed and to be able to slow down the rate that are being applicated and increase depending on where your boom's at turning and everything that's awesome it's amazing it works really well i absolutely love the way this sprayer handles that boom out there 120 feet of boom 20 more feet than ours you think it'd be heavier you think it'd be more unbalanced and moving around no it's like a mother holding a newborn baby i'm not kidding that boom just sits there i go through some big ditches or some bumps i've hit some things with the sprayer and you would expect the booms to be flopping and bouncing out there no just kind of rides up and down that boom's gonna last a long time if you don't wrap that around a power pole or a fence line or something it doesn't take much abuse it just sits there and i love it it. Ours get beat up. Our Apache, our big brood, that boom takes a beating. The float system on this, how it handles that boom is, is, is very nice. I love the auto boom. It's quick, it's responsive, it's pretty accurate. Very rarely do I ever have to manually lift the boom up. Almost all the time, I just let it do its thing. And that's like half of the stress of spraying is controlling that boom and keeping it from dragging on the ground. So I love that. I love the visibility in this cab. Amazing visibility. Honestly, it's, it's awesome. Sitting in front of this axle like this, I got good visibility. I got my wheels spaced out right now always so I can see them. I kind of like watching. It's kind of neat seeing that wheel and suspension move and I don't know, I just, I just like it. But uh, I love the sound. This thing is quiet. It's quiet. I don't have to talk real loud. I can have conversations, phone calls. It's really quiet. I literally, if you don't drive it and you just have the engine running full bore back there, it's amazing. You can hardly even hear it. All your sound is just the hydraulics in this thing making squealing sounds. I love this monitor. This Raven monitor is awesome. Viper Plus, I believe. And it's amazing. It's a good monitor. Uh, all my stuff is basically right here, front and center that I need. Really crisp, really fast. I love how snappy it is. It's one thing that really grinds my gears on expensive monitors and farm machinery is when they're slow. There's no excuse for that. Your cell phone that's $200 is faster than a lot of these monitors out there. And I'm not joking, there's no, there's no excuse for that. That's just either poor components put inside or bad software. And that can be corrected 
I keep telling myself, why don't some of these companies hire game programmers, video game programmers, to design these systems? Because if you go play a video game, they have similar stuff like this, and I'm not kidding. There's a lot of games, like, like Space Game, where the interfaces of video games are just fabulous. And that's because that's what they do for a living. So they need to get some of those guys to design the interface on these. This one, done really well. Speed of this thing, fast, love it. Lights on this thing, really good. There's an LED package on the cab, lights the field up really well, really like that. I love the stainless steel tank. The reason for it, it's stainless steel is when you change chemicals, there's not as much needing to clean the tank out. Plastic can absorb chemicals, so plastic tanks will have carryover residual of previous chemicals, which can hurt your crops if you're changing over to something that's harmful for the next crop you're spraying. Steel tanks, easy to clean out, and they're durable. I love this engine in this thing. Good power, runs really smooth, just sips the def. It's not bad. I've literally only put a little bit of depth in this thing, but it can run at least three full tank loads of fuel for one tank of def, and that's, that's impressive. And it's honestly not been too bad on the fuel either. It's not as good, I'd say, as the Brute, but it's definitely good. I love the ride. This thing rides really nice. It floats. I hit a bump. I don't worry about like bracing myself and grabbing onto something. It just rides across. Really nice ride. A lot of that's to do with the seat. The seat has an awesome air ride system. And let's just go ahead and talk about this seat. The seat's got built-in air conditioning, built-in heating, leather, very comfortable, good lumbar. I really like the seat. I wish I could take it out and put it in my office or my car or wherever. This is like one of my favorite seats, honestly. The seat's awesome. So very good job on the seats. And the buddy seat, a great buddy seat too. Good comfort for whoever's riding with you. Cab's got good good uh, uh, storage up here. Good place, a cigarette charge port up here. So if you need to charge something, that's really nice. Eventually I'd imagine they're gonna have USB ports everywhere, but for now that's that. I love the 120 feet of boom. I know I talked about that earlier. It's just a really nice size boom. I thought 120 feet might be a little bit much. No, it's, once you get used to it, it's, it's great. I love how this sprayer handles itself driving down the road. When these booms are wung up and cradled in the position and you're cruising down the road, they're great. They don't move, they don't bounce, they're just solid, locked on. Our other sprayers, that boom bounces on the brood, it's shaking and it's bouncing and it's, how, it's not how we built it, it's how it was from the factory. The Apache, same thing, shaking and bouncing. This thing, boom solid. It handles the boom very nicely and I really like that. Visibility with the booms up. You got a big open area here. The way they designed the boom when it folds up, it doesn't block your whole cab. It doesn't go way out in front of your cab like most other sprayers do. It's all open here. So I don't have to worry about looking left or right and trying to duck under the boom, peek through little cracks, whatever I can find to see if there's a car coming up I'm crossing an intersection or a train on a train track. I can see on this thing. That's fabulous. Really simple controls. Your joystick, everything on here, really simple. Easy to learn, didn't take me long. Even uh, even after just a few minutes, I had it figured out. I love the nozzle bodies on these. Uh, really nice setup for changing your nozzles. Clicks really nice, a lot heavier built than what's on our Brute or the Apache. Uh, and uh, really simple to change the nozzles and screens. I love the screens on this thing. There's only three main filters and then one small filter for the back. So basically a filter for the right wing, a filter for the left wing, a little filter for the center section, and then a main filter coming off the tank. Unlike the other sprayers that I've seen and been in, there's literally a filter for every section. So this has seven sections. That means you need seven filters plus your main filter, so eight filters total. This is way nicer. The sprayer has the ability to suck chemical inside quickly. Um, I haven't actually used it yet, but I've heard it's pretty quick. That's definitely a bonus. A lot of the new sprayers are all doing that. The sprayer also has a nice piggyback clean tank up top here. So if you need to wash your hands, if you need to flush the system with clean water, you can just turn a valve and it'll run clean water through all the booms and uh, get you changed over so you can get another chemical in or another product. Fill this up with fuel is real easy. Fuel tank's right in the front with the depth tank right next to each other. So real simple to clamp the ladder, put the fuel spout in. It has a pretty big tank on it. I think it holds quite a bit of fuel. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's pretty good. The deck, it's simple. I like it, but I cannot figure out how to connect my phone to the Bluetooth on here. I tried. It says it's connected, but I think it's only for phone calls. I don't think I can stream audio to this Bluetooth, so I think I have to use an auxiliary cord. Isn't the end of the world. It's just Maybe there's a way I haven't figured it out, but that's definitely something I'm still messing with. One thing I really like also is the wheelie bars. It's for your feet back there, these foot pegs. Seems really simple, seems really stupid. It's not, it's awesome. I'm glad they have it. They have these in the Steiger tractors. They have these in the, the Patriots. I think they also have them in the Magnums. And I love it. I wish they were in the combines too. Maybe they're coming, I don't know. I know the cab's a little different, but normally you'd be putting your lunch box there, your toolbox or your water bottle to prop your feet up on. This is nice. Just put your feet up. Just I don't know, that much more level of comfort. And it's such a simple thing. It's just a bar with rubber ends on it. 
Really easy steering wheel adjustment. Doesn't take much effort at all to adjust. The seat, moving in and out, really simple, like that. Oh, well, I think that's it for me. I emptied the water truck completely and uh, I'm almost out of fuel, really low on death fluid. I better bring it back to the farm, call it good for tonight. It's like 10 o'clock, 10, 15. I'll do some tomorrow spraying, how about that? Beautiful evening though. Why am I big brute? And why is there a yank of rope right there on the side? Well, let's just say it wasn't me this time. I'm gonna be the rescuer. Let's go recover leg arms. He's stuck in the Apache. Brute's the only thing that's available at the moment to go get him, so I think it'll work. Let's go grab him, yank him out. Yeah, so I was spraying chickpeas and I'm stuck. Yeah, my bad. All right, let's go evaluate and see what I've got going on. Oops. Yeah, there's a little little washout that goes right through this little piece of field that we have chickpeas on, and uh, it's got some alkali here. Well, the rest of this field is dry, and I've been spraying just fine, not mashing anything. It's just this little spot right here. Well. I've been going through over here many, many times and it looks the same, just kind of floating across it for the most part. But this time it decided not to float through. I started digging and I just said, you know what? It's not worth it because I'm going to need to be pulled out. I knew it. I should have just sprayed around this instead of going through, but I was like, there's a chance I can make it. I know it. I know I can make it. Uh, I can't make it. Uh, I suck. Yeah, I suck. So it's pretty incredible to me that these chickpeas, they're a pretty solid plant. They pop through some really heavy ground, like big chunks of hard crusted ground over on our place over there. And we got a beautiful stand. It's turning out to be wonderful. And what amazes me is you take driving on this crop and you're like, oh, I don't want to damage it. I don't want to drive on it. We don't want to hurt the crop. You know, there's a lot of money at stake but you have to spray it. And they claim that you can run over these things and you can push them down and you can, you know, call them bad names and they'll just stand up and stand strong and, and uh, yeah, you won't hardly notice any problem. And you look at driving on this stuff here that you think, well, I'm just chopping it up with those tires, those big lugs and, you know, slicing it. And well, it's, they take a beating, but they pop right back. That's what they say. And, uh, it's pretty incredible. Um, yeah, we're getting a pretty good stand so far. So anyways, I'm waiting for Nick to show up so I can get pulled out. I know, I know, you can say it. Oh, come on, leg arms, you knew better. Yeah, I did, I did. Oh well, at least you guys get to see it's pulled out. Ah uh, yes, I've been stuck here before. This makes perfect sense. That's okay, we'll get them out. One way or another, we always do. All right, I think we're good. We got the inch and a half Yankum rope and it's attached to the rear axle of the Apache. There's not a really good place to pull on these Apaches but that rear axle, so you just gotta make sure you have a hook up there. And then we got front toe hooks on the brute, so I'm just gonna go in reverse, that way I can see what he's doing. Otherwise, if I were to pull the other way, I'd have no idea, we'd have to be on our phones trying to say, hey, stop or go or whatever. So at least here I can give thumbs up or cut or whatever. So we'll just go give thumbs up and uh, let's get him out.
Sadly, that did not get it out. We're gonna need some more muscle. Yeah. Yeah, there's not enough traction. I think we're gonna have to bring the big butt in here. Get him out. That's just about all we can do. I mean, if I had this thing fully loaded with water, I might have a little better traction on him, but probably better bring the bigger rope too, the two inch. Oh boy. Maybe I'll just leave the sprayer here for today because uh, we got a lot to do and I don't really want to mess with this thing, but we'll see. We'll figure out a plan. Hello, ladies. Um, You, we'll take this one. I know the drawbar's got a problem, but it's not the drawbar itself. It's the support holding the drawbar. And my phone, I'm not answering that. Anyways, this butt will work. It'll be fine. It'll uh, do what we need to do. And then we can pull slow and not have to just really rip on it. The weight of this thing will do it. I got to take this problem. No, I don't. Okay, let's go. All right, well, got the two inch yank and rope on there. That ought to be sufficient for the whole hour of this tractor. I'm just gonna put it in reverse and uh, pull slow and uh, we'll get that guy out of there. I didn't even struggle. <laughs> I didn't even give it full throttle. I just kind of eased into it a little bit, just watched it, just drag it through the mud. Well, obviously, it's 55,000 pounds right there, 600 horsepower. That's enough to pull this guy out. All right, well, let's get everything back and uh, get to spraying. There's a Patriot waiting for me. Hopefully, leg arms, so I gotta get him in there, I think, because he needs to drive it. But he's gonna finish off this load first in this field, and then we'll get him trained and get him going. And then there's rain coming today. So, yeah, we gotta get at it. Nice having a horsepower around. There's time like this to come in handy. Sometimes it just takes some muscle, right? And it's not my type of muscle. I feel like this is gonna be really, 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 really off balance going down the road. We're gonna have to put some wheel weights on that to balance it out. Every once in a while, it's nice to have big toys like that. Bye, Nick. Thank you. Come back again, please. I love that tractor boys and their toys.